title of the presentation is Where Are We Now? In my experience so far in attempting to promote the ideas of the movement and the Venus Project, I find about 95% of the critics tend to ignore the current state of affairs. And in a detached manner, they simply criticize the abstracts of what our proposed resolutions are, without ever reflecting on the train of thought that was employed to reach those solutions. So in response to this, I decided to simply focus on the information which will, at a minimum, at least further compound the dire need to get away from our current social practices, while also showing the logic that the Venus Project employs to arrive at the conclusions and ideas that they do. We're not just making things up. Jacques Frisco didn't just creatively come up with ideas. He has a pivotal train of thought, and it has a near empirical basis. So first, there's going to be an overview of the movement and the tenets of the Venus Project. And then part one, we're going to elaborate even more so on the nature of our world monetary system and its consequences. While in part two, we will take a larger step back and consider the human condition, its cultivation, and the effects of the social system at large. Now, before I begin, please note that it was recommended in the email sent out that people read the orientation guide or the activist video, because basically I'm going to move very quickly through a lot of this information on the assumption that a lot of you are already familiar with some of it. If you're not, um, don't be surprised if some things come as extremely foreign. This lecture is actually part of two lectures. The second lecture will be given sometime in the future to deal with the other section, as you'll see I deal with the first part of the idea, which is the fact our social system is corrupt. And the second section is what these solutions are. We're not going to talk about solutions specifically right now. We're going to talk about the reasoning behind it. The term zeitgeist is defined as the intellectual, moral, cultural climate of an era. The term movement simply implies motion or change. Therefore, the zeitgeist movement is thus an organization that urges change in the dominant intellectual, moral, and cultural climate of the time specifically to values and practices which would better serve the well-being of the whole of humanity, regardless of race, religion, creed, or any other form of contrived social status. The Zeitgeist Movement in Function exists as a commutative representation of an organization called the Venus Project, which is essentially a conceptual and technological set of ideas which constitutes the lifelong work of industrial designer and social engineer Jacques Fresco. Mr. Fresco, along with his associate Roxanne Meadows, have been working for decades to establish the technical methods and educational imperatives which can transition society away from its current cycles of war, perpetual poverty, and pervasive corruption into an improved social design based on environmental alignment, practicality, peak efficiency, and most critically, a heightened standard of living, personal freedom, and well-being for not just one nation or class, but for the entire human family. The ultimate materialization of these ideas is in the form of a new social design updated to present day knowledge, and the design can be termed a resource based economy. In the words of Mr. Fresco, we call for a straightforward redesign of our culture in which the age old inadequacies of war, poverty, hunger, debt, and unnecessary human suffering are viewed as not only avoidable, but also as totally unacceptable. Anything less will simply result simply results in a continuation of the same catalog of problems inherent in the present system. In summary, a resource-based economy utilizes resources rather than commerce. All goods and services are available without the use of currency, credit, barter, or any form of debt or servitude. The aim of this new social design is to free humanity from the repetitive, mundane, and arbitrary occupational roles which hold no true relevance to social development and while also encouraging a new incentive system that is focused on self-fulfillment, education, social awareness, and creativity, as opposed to the contrived, shallow, self-interested, corruption-generating goals of wealth, property, and power, which are dominant today. The enabling foundation of this concept is the realization that through the intelligent management of the Earth's resources, along with the liberal application of modern technology and science, we have the ability to create a near global abundance on this planet and thus escape the detrimental consequences generated by the real and artificial scarcity and waste which is dominant today. This reality can provably create a high quality of life for the entire world population many, many times over. The Venus Project takes into account something which has been long lost in our modern financially driven world. 
the fundamental building blocks of society and the basic understandings required to maintain a person's emotional, intellectual, and physical well-being. All social systems, regardless of political philosophy, religious beliefs, or social customs, ultimately depend upon natural resources as the initial step towards social functionality. Concurrently, society itself is a culture machine. In other words, it's a natural consequence for a culture to support the values integral to the dominant institutions of that, of that society, regardless of the benefit of those values. In other words, the society reaps what it sows. If your society's foundation inherently supports self-interest, elitism, greed, and dishonesty, then no one should ever be surprised when certain members of society continuously fall into the extremity of murder, financial corruption, or indifferent selfish gain. In other words, society is not only a product of the sum of its members' values, paradoxically, it's also a generator of them for each new generation. It should be no wonder that government perpetuates nationalistic and patriotic values. If they didn't, people might not support the state agendas or their wars. It should be no wonder that the Catholic Church perpetuates the idea that humans are born into sin. Otherwise, people might not show up to be saved. And it should be no wonder every major city on this planet is cloaked with corporate advertising working to force materialism and inadequacy. Why? Because otherwise, some people might just be happy with what they have and not contribute to the profit and perpetuation of a corporation or an economy. Regardless, when it comes to cultural influence, nothing can hold a candle to the vast psychological implications that have developed due to the system of monetary finance. Money, contrary to the attitudes of most of the world's population today, is not a natural resource, nor does it represent resources. In fact, by all standards of logic, money is only functionally relevant in society when natural resources and the mechanisms of creation are scarce. And thus, a system has emerged where people are given value for their skills in exchange for their servitude, which can thus be used as a medium of exchange for those supposed scarce resources. Sadly, the culture is now fully indoctrinated into this frame of reference. And like the rising sun, most cannot even consider any other possibility for uh, social functionality. In fact, some have even redefined the relevance of money itself by being conditioned to think that money represents choice, that money somehow has something to do with democracy, and the greatest delusion that the monetary structure is a tool of liberty. Well, while money has indeed served a positive role overall in the course of our social evolution, adaptation and change and improvement is still unstoppable. The fact is, most of the original problems which require the development of the economic system we see today are no longer pressing due to the dramatic advancement of science and technology.